So, I'm going to talk to you today about a concept I call prehearsal. Okay, is this something that is a millennial hipster mashup? No, I made this up, okay, but it's a simulation concept, okay, and what it is is prepare, rehearse, perform. So, if you don't prepare and you don't rehearse, you cannot perform correctly. So, we're going to show you this concept uh, on a uh, chest tube today, okay. So, you know, in order to kind of get us in the mood, if you need to know where to go, you know, you can mark yourself up, okay, just so you know. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick L chest tube. And the most important thing is to prepare your equipment, and I like to do it in the way that I'm going to use the actual tools. Okay, so I just line them up like this, okay. Got that? All right, very good. All right, now, because this is a demo, I'm not gowned, I'm not draped, you know, I'm not, there's no sterile gown, no drape, but make sure that you do that, okay? So, suspend disbelief, all right? First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna find your landmarks, and so um, you're gonna go nipple line, mid-axillary line is the, the easiest approach. If the person has a lot of chest tissue, have someone gently retract the skin so that you get close to the ribs, okay? Or you can lay the person on their side with the affected side up. And that way you can go straight down and some of that tissue will naturally fall by gravity, all right? So maybe you'll come around this way. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna find my side of insertion, okay? I find the rib, I'm gonna make an incision about two centimeters long, right over the rib, okay? And then, here's where most people mess up, okay? They forget to put a syringe with some saline on the uh, introducer needle. And why do you need to do that? Because you need to be able to check for the presence of air bubbles so that you know you're in, okay? So then, I go in, I'm on the rib, okay? Then I gently walk it up, and I enter the pleural space, and you see air bubbles, okay, lots of air bubbles, good, right? If you get resistance and no air bubbles, guess what? You're not in the space, all right? But once you're conf confident that you're in there, start cannulating the guide wire. Now, these guide wires have a special, see if you don't ever do that, okay? Um, this feature so that you can use your finger and straighten it out. So for those of us that, have, that are old or have a little bit of a tremor, that sometimes helps, okay? So, I'm gonna feed the guide wire in. And the, it should go in pretty easily, okay? And the tip is soft. Don't stick the hard end in. Never stick the hard end in because this is gonna puncture something, okay? So once you're in, keep the wire static. Pull off the needle and the, that little guide cap. And then what you're going to do next is dilate, all right? So you've got a series of dilators and the tube. So if you have time and, uh, you know, after you've premedicated the patient, hopefully, you're going to use this dilator and you're going to dilate in. Give a little twist. Sometimes there's bleeding. Okay, don't get scared. It's okay. Dilate with the, the next one. And so you sequentially dilate with larger and larger dilators so that you can introduce this tube. Now this one is a 14 French cook catheter, which is uh, absolutely fine for spontaneous as well as uh, uh, pleural effusions. Not great um, for real large hemothoraces for, and certainly probably not for trauma. But now you see there's little fenestrations on the tube. Get a close up of that, mm -hmm. all right? and some guide markers, okay? So what I neglected to say is you, you're gonna measure what you think is uh, proper depth before you insert the tube, okay? And so, um, and then you're gonna guide it down and towards the head. And when you think you're there, okay, so this one's at about 12, 13. It's pretty good. And take out guide wire and the 
the last introducer. You're going to hook it up to Plurvac. Okay, you're going to check for respiratory variation in the in the uh, Plurvac. You know, that's a different video. Okay, and then here's the most important part. Okay, you're going to secure the tube in so that it doesn't fall out. Because guess what? If it falls out, one said dude or gal. And so it's kind of like a cooking show, isn't it? So you want to find the right instrument. And this is clearly too big. This is a Kelly for an open chest tube. These are from the kits. They're okay. I'm gonna use this one. This is like a surgeon's special. Okay, it's got the gold, you know, blingy bling. So if you got one of those, use that. Um, because these are smaller tubes, you don't need to use O silk. Two O silk is fine. Two O silk. All right. And so there's a lot of different ways to secure it. Okay. And the, uh, the way I like to do it, the way I was taught, is to make a purse string around it. So I'm going to come around. Anyway. Okay, and now you're, you've got a purse string, hopefully, around. It is not. We're going to do that again. See? This bad, okay? Not secured, bad. Redo. Let me keep that one in. So it is kind of wrapped around the tube now. I went around the tube and I'm gonna cut off my needle. I'm gonna leave the two lengths about equal. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do first, okay, is just secure it down and wrap it around. I you see I didn't tie it twice, and that's so that when the uh, uh, surgeon then decides he's going to remove it or she's going to remove it, um, the, the knots can remain intact. So I tie another one here like that around the base and then wrap it around a couple times because you don't want this to fall out, okay? All this hard work goes for naught, falls out. All right, so, all right, like that. I got multiple layers. I'm gonna secure it down. And then I'm gonna tie it a bunch of knots this way, and that thing is not going anywhere, okay? And the reason that I left those uh, un, uh, unknotted with just one knot, right? So. Is so that all right so now the now that you have this the surgeons ready to take it out two to three days later after the, the patient's better what the surgeon will do is undo it there unwrap it okay and now what you have is you have the edges here like this, I'm gonna close up with that, all right? So this is still intact. And now, you can have the patient take a deep breath in, hold it, and you pull it out. And then, the skin is secure, and then you tie it down right here, and voila. And then you can suture the skin closed, and that'll prevent an, a reintroduction of an air leak, okay? So that's why I do it that way, okay? Okay, any other questions? No? Good, I'm out.